Hello, all of you wonderful, wonderful Go fanatics out there. A little bit of a special video for you guys. As you can see, you are looking down at my board. Now, don't ask how I actually managed to set this up. I do not have a tripod, and it required a very, very, very low-tech uh, solution involving <laughs> a lot of books and some duct tape. So, yeah, that's fun. But it will allow me to record my board. Now, you might ask yourself why, and it's because I do try and answer people's questions that I have aimed at me, and one of them that I am asked over and over and over again is how in the crap do I study a professional game? Good question. Really, really good question. Uh, kind of threw that around in my head for a while, trying to figure out how I want to answer it, and I uh, kind of hit upon the idea of maybe showing you exactly how I would study a professional game. Which, of course, would mean recording my board, which is what you are seeing before you. Now, right away, uh, there are a few things that we need to go ahead and get out of the way before we decide, you know, is this a game that we're going to study? If, for example, you quickly scroll through it, and you see that it's a lot of contact fighting just from start to finish. Maybe that's not the game that we really, really should be going over. Uh, the game that I will be going over is a bit of a simpler game here at the start. Uh, might make a bit of a series of this to show you that even those complicated games, they, they are manageable. Uh, but for this game, we're going to start off nice and simple with a Cheng Ho game. Uh, going to, of course, not be going over any really, really weird openings. That shouldn't surprise anyone. I wouldn't be studying them, and I definitely will be playing them in a video like this. Uh, one thing that you cannot see, though, I should mention, is I have not memorized this game. I, in fact, have this game uh, similar to what I would imagine you guys would have the game open on. Uh, maybe on your computer, on your phone, wherever. That way you can actually view the game record. Uh, reason why I don't recommend that you actually simply study it on there is because if you have a, any kind of scroll wheel, then you might zip through that thing and we'll have no idea what the frack we were studying. So I definitely recommend getting yourself a bit of a board. Um, doesn't have to be an expensive one. Could be just, you know, a cheap foldable, whatever, you know, works for you. That way it slows you down and kind of forces you to think about your moves, or not your moves, but the moves that are in front of you a little bit more. So here we are, all set up. Uh, first move, Yi Cheng Ho, 4-4 four, four in the corner. His opponent, um, I really don't know who it is, and from my position I can't actually see the name. Uh, I do see that he is a professional Fordon, so that helps. I'll of course have uh, maybe the game record and, you know, who's actually playing this in the description down below on YouTube. opens up 3-4, and right away, I want to go ahead and stop here for a minute. Yep, four moves in and we're already going to halt. Because the game essentially is going to be telling you a story, and if we're not paying attention and understanding what that story is saying, then we're going to immediately get lost. For example, let's say black did not open this way. Let's say black opened with 3-3 three, three points. The story immediately changes. Instead, what we're now seeing is, well, the story of this game is that Black seems to be interested in a territorial opening. So we're going to be interested to find out how he goes about and secures himself his territory. Instead, in this game, we have a 4-4 and a 3-4 point. So this is a nice flexible opening from, uh, whoops, not that way, from uh, both players. So it might go influent, it's still possible. It might go territory, that's possible too. But even in the very beginning of the game, we want to make certain that we understand to the best of our ability what's going on. Black encloses for orthodox. If you would be more inclined to, let's say, approach the corner, that does not mean that your approach is wrong. It is simply a different way of opening. There are many, many options, and that's also important to keep in mind when you are studying uh, anything, really. Well, a game, anyway. Just because they don't play exactly what you played 
doesn't mean it's wrong. If you are, for example, uh, actually watching a game live with uh, comments being played by another professional, you'll notice that he's going over, or she, is going over many, many different variations, right? But just because their variations aren't always right doesn't mean they were wrong. Similar thing. All right, orthodox approach, uh, expected. We're either going to see a split or an approach on our 4-4 uh, stone. Very, very uh, standard. Black backs off into a large knight. Now, that is definitely not standard. Normally, what is standard is either seeing a uh, small knight or some kind of pincer. Large knight, typically for influence. So right away, though we do not know if we are right yet, we'll see how the game plays out. This, this says, okay, I'm fine with you going into my corner. And if he does, we would block normally, because this is for influence, we would get our wall. Hopefully in Sente, so maybe we can take something here. So that's currently our thought right now. Maybe that's not what happens, but we'll see how it goes. White immediately plays super, super aggressively and attaches to the 3-4 to the three four enclosure. Now, here's where uh, studying a game uh, as amateurs, questions start to come uh, popping in our heads. Because maybe we could have predicted a 3-3 three, three, uh, invasion. Maybe we could have even predicted simply going for a base or backing off. I mean, those are pretty easy to predict. So what the frack is this all about? Well, we can make some guesses, such as what is going on here? What do we see just in this area? And we see an attachment, right? Basic. So what do we know about attachment? We know that when you attach to something, you're making it stronger. You're not expecting to kill this corner, for example, by attaching to it. You expect to make it stronger and hopefully make your stone stronger as well. So right now, we see that for some reason, white really, really, really wants to make that stone stronger, even at the cost of making the enclosure uh, stronger as well. Now, I have a few thoughts about why that might be, but before I reveal them, uh, I'm going to let uh, you think about them and see if you can find a couple of reasons why that might be interesting as well. And you can think about that while I'm going over the standard variation for this. So what did you come up with? Why might White have played this way? Because by now you should have a fairly good idea. He's playing really, really fast, so he can develop here. Right? If he instead simply, let's say we didn't play this way, and we had simply backed off. Well, clearly we don't have many uh, stones on the right-hand side. We can be attacked. We can be pincered. We could potentially even be kicked. Or something completely else entirely. A lot of different options there. White decided that he didn't want to draw back like this. And he decided that it was in his best interest to see if he can develop the right hand side as quick as possible. Now. Let's go back to where we were. How did I lose a white stone? Why must I put it away somewhere? Oh well. Alright, now we're back to where we were. So right away, we can see that white has made an interesting little area for himself on the right hand side. But, what does black do now? Because this enclosure is typically more for influence. 
uh, specifically because the 3 3 point is still open. Now, the thing with the 3 3 point is if we took it immediately, and I guess we can go ahead and show that too while we're at it. Why not? Easy to go back and forth through here. If we took it immediately and we got separated, as we would expect to do, and let's say black keeps us separated, so all we're forced to do is just kind of live here while we're giving more and more influence to black, and more and more influence to black, and more and more and more. What you can see here is a nice little wall is being developed, and it's probably going to be in Gote as well, so we're giving a nice little wall and Sente to take a point. Now, since, white, or since black did open up with that large knight, we would like to go back and play there, right? But white did not in fact do that. Instead, we saw white do something completely different. The minute white saw that move, he decided to go back into super super uh, aggressive style and try to live here as fast as he possibly could on a larger scale as he possibly could. Now, if he goes back and hits that 3-3, three, three, we can see that the damage is going to be minimal because we have all of this area here, or not the area, but we have all of these stones here blocking the influence that wall would give, which is why it should become as no surprise to anyone that black goes back and defends. Because white got all of this on the side, we simply cannot allow that 3-3, three, three, such as black's thinking. Sadly, this does give uh, Sente to white, so what do we do? Well, I was looking at the game, trying to picture what uh, we should do. Um, I'm looking for weak groups. Always, 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 whenever you have Sente, look for weak groups. Uh, we see the one over here. That's really the only one, because we've got the corners, right? But nothing really interesting is going on with them. I mean, these two for black are about as solid as they can possibly get. And the two for white are completely open. So we could enclose our corner, do something with those. We could aid our group, but do we really have to? I mean, what's the worst that black can do? Black can come in, right? But that's not going to really, really hurt this group because it's so large. So maybe wasting a move right now to defend it might be a little bit too small might be a little bit too small. Instead, I'm kind of liking the idea of looking at those large points. We were playing fast over here, why not continue it over here? So immediately I'm thinking maybe he'll go back and enclose. Maybe he'll try and take a framework for himself. I think these two better fit uh, the idea on the right hand side. Now I say maybe because I briefly looked at this game uh, just in a matter of seconds, I haven't actually looked through this in any great length. That way, most of what's going on here should be new to me as well. Okay, he does in fact take the sm um, low Chinese for himself. Alright, that's good. Um, normal approaches to low Chinese is something on the outside. Approach from uh, outside the 3-4 stone. Get him to enclose, that way this is no longer low Chinese. It would be an enclosure with an extension. Um, can always approach the three, uh, four, four point as well. Can go back and attack, but as we mentioned, we think that that's probably going to be a little bit too small to do right now. What is white? Okay, black decides to approach. Seems normal enough. What's he going to do? Is he going to settle? Is he going to back off? He immediately chooses to go into the corner. So this is another one of those, okay, how did he find that move? Why is he playing it? 
immediately our eyes are drawn to his corners, right? He's clearly playing for territory. So it does make sense, based on that alone, that it makes sense for him to go on and continue playing for territory in the upper left-hand corner. If he backs off, this is more saying I was trying to build a framework, but we can see that's not the case over here. This has turned into more territory. So all right, that's easily understood. Oh, okay, white's going to block. All right. All right, we can clearly see based on this alone, we can halt right here because we had an option. Options here that we're trying to guess is do we block or do we allow connection? He chose to allow con to uh, block. Why? Because we can picture another stone on the right-hand side and say to ourselves, yeah, that's that might just be worth developing. I mean, this seems like a very large area, doesn't it? All right, all right. I can see what's going on there. Oops. You'll have to excuse my mess. I, uh, I don't get a chance to actually use a real board outside of studying, and uh, I have absolutely no idea if most of these... Uh, Stones are off-center. If they are, you'll have to forgive me. Alright, so we just living in the corner because all we were doing was taking some territory. And that's what we are going to continue doing. Looking for some Aji. Makes sense, makes sense. White decides to play the Hane instead of dropping down. Okay. You. You. We are not getting our colors wrong this game. That would be so embarrassing if we did that. I mean, we're picking them up out of a bowl. If we get them wrong now, that's just retarded. And this is pretty much standard. Just to ensure that we're living here, in the corner. Hopefully in Sente. So maybe we can fight the idea that our opponent will actually get all of this as territory. Or as development, anyway. So we're forcing white to connect. Our stones are pretty well screwed here. It's black, though. The question is, what do we do now? Um, if we truly have Sente here, maybe we can play a two-space extension, try to get it out. But that feels kind of passive, doesn't it? That feels really passive. What do we do instead? Um, well, we wouldn't want to play away, right? I mean, we have that wonderful, wonderful proverb, don't go fishing when your house is on fire. And uh, this, this area does seem rather important, right? So I think if we played a move elsewhere, or even uh, an approach, that would kind of be going fishing when our house is on fire. I think we're going to see a cut. We are seeing a cut. Okay. So we back off there, obviously. We're not going to jump away here, as some people might want to do, because then we're screwed. So strengthening cutting stone, very, very, very important. Go back and live, also very, very important. Plus it turns this into a nice forcing move. This and another move here begins to develop that side, which is also kind of nice. Yup. White's forced to ensure that can't happen. And then he ensures that he can't extend. Makes sense. Makes sense. Continuing to pull this stone out, now that these stones are pretty much dead, um, wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, this area is pretty strong now. If we pulled this out, let's uh, examine what's going to happen. Because I mentioned uh, cutting here is aggressive, so maybe trying to save our stones and do something with them also might be aggressive. But what do we do now? Do we jump out? 
if we do, we can still see an extension or maybe even a flat out cap. I mean, that, that looks deadly. Wow. If we picture like even one more stone here, however you want to play it in order to chase this group, then we can see that this left, this right hand side kind of begins to really, really grow on you. Feels that we need like a very, very fast move here in order to ensure it doesn't happen. Okay. That makes sense. So not the right time to pull out that stone. And if you thought it was, don't just blindly continue going through the rest of the game. That's what we're trying to avoid go back, like I just did, and examine what that looks like when we start to pull out our stone. That way we can actually better understand why he chose not to do it. Alright, Black's getting uh, some stones a little bit closer now. Now we can actually pull out those stones. That'd be uh, pretty nice for white or black. All right, so white kills him off. Understandable. That I shouldn't have played that move immediately because we had Sente. Oh well, I spoiled it. But immediately. When we had Sensei, we should stop. I mean, I accidentally went forward twice when I scrolled, so I immediately played the stone. But here is where we would actually want to hold off and figure out what do we want to do now. Because we clearly have Sensei. So, is it time to invade this again? Focus everything on the upper right? Is it time to approach? Mm. Bottom is still large, and because we know what happens next, we know we can kind of figure out why he chose not to do that. Because we can easily see white still has a good chance of development here, right? In fact, what is a pretty good chance of development and maybe an expansion? That could be a thing, right? So it doesn't look like black is interested in doing that just yet. Steady approaches, because there's still quite a bit of territory here. White, on the other hand, now needs to decide what to do. Does he simply enclose? Seems kind of passive. This gives Sente to black again. We can go off and do something with our black stone, not the white ones. We can do that. For example. So white does not enclose. He actually puts pressure on his stone. Now we're trying to force something like this. We might get Sente. Might also get to continue in, uh, expanding. And now this area is becoming quite uh, nice for white, isn't it? I mean, even if we just jump up here. Though, I'd like to lean better, but I'm more aggressive. Uh, what else can black do? Um, well, we can still do this, and we can still do this. Invade or approach. We can do either or, either or. <clears throat> Which one do I think he's going to do? I, I don't know. I keep looking at the right-hand side. Because for the left, we still have a stone that we can break out. We still have a low stone that we can cap. Is white really going to go back and enclose us now? But it can lean on us, and that can be unfortunate. But I don't want to jump out. I don't know, I'm kind of leaning on either here or here. I don't want to... I don't think I want to play this. Okay. Black does attack, and I assume that white's gonna play on top, because this seems entirely too passive. Yep. Okay, this is gonna get complicated. 
we have choices in order to live. We could play this and simply connect up. White gets some influence and gets to keep some territory. We don't see that. Instead, Black plays a more aggressive style and plays the Hane. This way he says, you can Atari me, and I'll come out, and I'm okay with this. Or you can keep me low, I can potentially connect up, or continue destroying your area. White says, I don't want you to continue destroying my area, so get the frack out of here. Black says, okie dokie, I'm going to do that. And now we can see another valuable play for this move something we didn't actually understand, perhaps, when we were playing it. That this is now a ladder breaker on both sides. So, that right there is extremely, extremely important, right? When we had Sentai, we were looking where to play. We were thinking, do we approach? Do we extend? Do we do something else? Do we attack? Black read the attack and realized he needed a ladder breaker here. So this move became worth more than just an extension and uh, preventing white from extending, expanding rather. It also became a very very needed ladder breaker. So if you were going over this game again, after we got to this point, you would understand more about this than you did initially. And that's kind of what I meant by when I said, um, like, if you're not paying attention to the game, then you'll kind of miss the story that it's telling. This right here is a kind of a good example of that. Connects, because we don't want to ladder that. Black is to ladder there instead. White connects. Black takes. And comes out. Okay, that's interesting. That means that here is a co. Again, we have Sensei. Do we go to co immediately? Uh, do we have threats? We kind of have threats up here, but I don't know if we have many threats anywhere else. Hmm. So, do we passively connect instead? Just allow our opponent to have Sente? If we do, we can bet that this area is going to be under uh, attack. So we don't want to give up Sente either would like to play the Ko, I think, but we need threats. Okay. White decides to, uh, or black decides to attach. Huh. Well, if he plays the Hane, that would certainly allow a cut and a lot of threats, so that might be interesting. Yeah, I don't think that uh, White could win that co at that point. I wonder... Yeah, I wonder if he backs off as a result. See, if we do allow the crosscut, what's going to happen? We need to protect our stone. Which one do we protect? Screw it, let's look at them both. If we protect this stone... Well, one option we obviously have is to live in the corner. Can't be killed. Okay. Um, what else do we have here? Well, I suppose we have an Atari. But that seems kind of small. Because this even gets to just friggin' connect. And then we've got these three stones, we don't know what they're doing. Don't like that one. So if he does pull back, going to assume that either one of two things would happen. 
this would be used as co, or we can just live in the corner. Um, this way we have the same option immediately to live as a, in the corner, but we have another option to completely wreck the side, which would be bad for white. Okay. Now that we understand the variations, let's go back to the game. Actual game, apparently white's going to let him live up here, in here, whatever. Here the variations, we can see why. Playing out normally. Black is pretty well alive in the corner now. Can still go to here. But I'm not liking it too much. I'm seeing a huge wall that we've just given him. And I'm seeing this little stone, because again, I have Sente, so... Uh, I would be thinking to myself, where are the weak groups? This I don't view as weak very much right now, because, I mean, we can still... Uh, go to Co, we can still get out, can still connect. This is pretty well connected, not viewing that as weak. Corners seems to be okay, all of them. So this seems to be the weakest thing on the board right now. So I vote jump. And jump it is. White, I have no idea what he's white's going to do. He has a co-lingering, which is annoying. We can't answer, because that's too frigging small. I mean, what are we going to get? Two, four, six? Not good, not good, not good. There's nothing really cool we can do to expand out, because we already have these points, right? So what are we going to try to get? Just a few more? Three, six, nine? Don't like that at all. I don't know what white can do, really. Alright, he decides to make certain no co ever, 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 ever gonna take place here. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Sente. So we can connect and ensure that we're safe. We could turn and ruin the, you know, two, four, six points that white might get. Kind of like a building up, but eh, that might be too small either, as well. Alright, he decides to probe. Well, I guess asking the question of what happened with that cut point is, is a pretty good one. And just how... Is white going to connect? I mean, is white going to connect solidly? Is it going to go up? Is it going to ignore? Probably not. Alright, we're going up. Black's playing the hot A. This is getting kind of large. Gets to connect. This we would never play in a million years. Never, 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 never. That's way too tiny. We have to use that. We've got to use it for something. Frack it. <laughs> we are going to expand. Sweet. Oh, I played that immediately without thinking. Essentially, if you play elsewhere, allow that to come in, well, then we're kind of allowing him to expand further and hurt our stone. We can actually be attacked here now, or invaded, things like that. You wouldn't want to ignore shoulder hits just on principle. Same thing, don't want to ignore damaging our stone. 
black jumps out. Okay, yeah. We can see the area that he's developing here. And we can see that he's in perfect position to continue going over to the left. Though, it occurred to me that might be right on the video. Going that way? Yeah, that's, that's huh, interesting. All right, so pokey, pokey, pokey. Make certain you can't get through that large knight. Continue to try to develop. All very straightforward. Why is he doing this? Because look at that. That's why he's doing this. Black then decides, okay, why there? Well, if you don't know about sector lines, this could be hard to find, right? But essentially, we can see uh, this stone right here, and this stone right here, that I just callously knocked away, and we can draw an imaginary line between these two stones. And look how much easier that is to do on a real board than on KGS. And we can see that line and know that if we go past it, let's say, even to here, can we get back out again? Seems really, really, really fracking hard to do. So we have to either live back here or die. And chances are we're probably going to do the whole dying thing of that one. So we know that's why he didn't go in. But this is still interesting to me, because what if he gets to push up here? If he gets to actually connect that, holy crap, then maybe he can expand here as well. Interesting. Or, shoot, man, maybe he can expand the top, because look at that. That's turning into something, too. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, white agrees. He's like, no, 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 you don't. I am going to ensure that does not happen. This actually is pretty good, too. Because if he pushes through here, after he discuts, if he uh, cuts that, uh, can't talk. If he disconnects this group with the stone that he just played and pushes up from this side, then that is isolated, right? So where's this going to go? Is this just going to go out and this follows and maybe we get to reduce this? Maybe. I don't know. But right now we don't want to get cut off, so we're going to ensure that we don't. And that looks off position to me, like every other stone that I've played. Yup. Yep, 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 yep. I see what's going on here. Do you guys see what's going on here as well? Given what I just said, I think you guys should all be able to follow along here. We can see immediately. Where are the weak groups? Here is a weak group, and the one that we just played is a weak group. They're both under attack simultaneously. But if we defend the one, this might get surrounded. Ooh, danger, danger, danger. I vote save our one stone. Because it looks like this group may still have two ways to connect. I vote save the stone. Oh, saving the stone is a go. Pokes. Okay. He's probably worried about uh, further reductions and revitalizing that uh, cutting point that's been kicking around for a while. But black is not going to connect meekly. He's going to counter. Okay. Definitely countering. Are we connected now? Are we connected? Are we connected? Do we need another move here? Uh, there is Aji. There is Aji. Hmm. I think we're connected. Because we can go back here, or we can go up, right? Yeah, we don't need another move here. We don't need another move like that. So... 
if we don't, then attack. Yep, attack. Okay. And again, same thing uh, to all of you. If you can't figure out why he played that way, um, why he played away, go ahead and try and cut that and see where that leads. Like, what if... Nope, oh, stupid. Let's go back here. derp a derp a derp a derp Let's go ahead and try and cut this, which we can probably do. Okay. This can get cut, clearly. We see that. But it can't cut it in sente. And that's the vital part of this. That cannot be cut in sente. So this group is a-okay. -okay. So white plays the Hane. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hmm. What do we do now? I mean, now that we've done that, doesn't it look like there's like a freaking little dotted line surrounding this group? All we need is like one more stone. Can we, like, save that group now? Can we, like, get out of here? Okay. Doesn't he jump out, though? Why doesn't he jump out? Why doesn't he jump out? I mean, shouldn't we be doing that instead? Hmm. I don't know. Can we? Can we actually get out of this? Mm, that is looking very, very dangerous. I don't know if we're going to survive a direct run. And even if we do, we're about to get ripped to shreds. Are we going to have to give up that group then? He plays here instead. Definitely not a connect by any means. White says, nope, that's mine now. Okay. I, I guess that is yours now, Mr. White, sir. I'm sorry. They're your stones. I, I, I deeply apologize for being connected to them. Well, not being connected to them, which is why they're dying. Ha! I made a joke. So we can't run them, so we're sacking them. Honey? Yeah. Yep, extend. We made some territory here at the very least. Got some corners for ourselves. This is actually a huge freaking corner, man. I mean, this is anchored all the way through here. And it's still undercut. We can, you know, have fun reducing that. This area is still open, so we can probably have fun reducing that as well. Or we can do something I would not have expected such as that. Well, I would have expected something similar. I would have... I had my eye on this, simply because I'm weak and I can't read out anything, I guess. This seems... That, yeah, that's, that's obvious, isn't it? Push through, or we get to do... Yeah. Because there's that, and then there's... Yeah. There's tons of Aji there. Alright. Alright, I, I, I buy that kind, sir. Oh, frack. And that's something that doesn't happen when you're reviewing on KGS, huh? Alright, so now we get to push through. White's gonna block. Black's gonna piss you off. I'm gonna connect. Okay. If you can't read that out, then go ahead and play here first. Cut. Realize he has to connect, and then cut through here, and tell me what that gets you. It's 
So we get to... Okay, that's, that's large. Wow. That's a lot of territory gone. Yep, breaking in. Must break in. Must break in. Black says, screw you. I'm taking your stone. White tries to keep some territory for himself. Yeah, I mean, where's the territory coming from? The right-hand side? And whatever that is. That makes sense. That makes sense. Black, of course, keeps going after the stones. Why is he going after them? Because we can clearly see these are under attack most severely. I mean, one more stone is all we have to picture, right? Something like this, or like that, that's on the middle of the line. Let him figure out where it is. And these are all gonna die. This is looking like a great game for uh, Black. Atari, creating cup points, okay. That makes sense. Creating cup points is frack me, he didn't do that. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why we review games. Because I responded there because I'm really, really bad at this game. Like, just knee-jerk react, like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do that. Just, why not? Black says, because I can do this instead and cut all of this off. What is he going to do? Is he going to Hane? I can Atari the Hane. So am I really in trouble if he does that? I don't know. White responds. Pokey pokey. Wow, pokey pokey. Getting into end game. Has to respond to that. Then goes back in Atari. Ouch, this is getting to be rather disgusting. And then connects through, lol. I would have been like, okay man, it's time to time to time to make certain that those are all gone. But that's Gote, isn't it? White trying to connect up those stones is Gote even if he can do it. And us disconnecting him is Gote as well, right? So, what's this? This says, uh, Sir, I would deeply like to cut off all your stones, if you do not mind. That is definitely larger. White says, Frack you, I'm gonna fight back. I'm not gonna just defend myself passively. Creating Anji. Good, good, good. We have cut point, cut point, cut point. This makes sense. Atari. Atari. After Atari. Because after Atari, you always want to take. That probably hurt your ears. Sorry about that. Alright, that is painful. Oh my god. He's about to push through and kill off those stones. White connects up. Black connects up. Kind of cuts off. I guess he's just hoping that he can kill off this group. I would be too, man. Black moves to connect. Can we kill this off? Can we kill it? Can we kill it? Go, White, go! Wow, that's bold. White and black says, no, nope, I'm fine. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. And of course he is. Look at this. Where's this going? Where's this group going? This group's going nowhere. It's completely surrounding. White says, maybe I'm not completely surrounded. Maybe something? Something there? Something there? Come on, bro. Give me a... Give me a... Give me a... Give me, a, give me something. Give me something. Lol. Black says, fine. Have it your way. I'll just uh, connect up here now. This is not going to be a capture race because I can cut or I can connect. Ay 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 ay. And expanding more liberties. Jeez. This is rough. Cuts through, ensures that this group is now immortal. Atari. Black says no coming into my territory. He knows it's important. I mean, this is still up for grabs, right? Not anymore. Gonna seal that off. Oh, dropping down. 
connects, cuts off. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Do you see what's going on? Takes. That's not looking good. We can take the two stones, but those two stones don't give us life. Tries to disconnect. Doesn't cut, strengthens himself first. White connects. Maybe if we can keep pushing down, we can kill those. Doesn't give Aji. Makes a nice strong extension. Takes stones, now we have one eye. Okay. And for freedom. Alright, alright. So he's expanded his liberties, now he's going to try to kill. But Black says, no killy killy. I like nutty nutty. Probably in those words. I can imagine Lee Cheng Ho saying that on national television. Uh, so those are dead. Did he resign? No, not yet. We're really going to co on this one? Oh, why? If we connect, right? Connect. Doot, 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 doot. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Can you read that out? If white tries to push, we connect. If white tries to push, we have to connect. Now both of these are taken up, so these are no liberties. If white pushes, we have to connect. White cuts off, and we only have that liberty, but we filled it, so we only have this liberty. So this would die. Alright. Co is a lot better option than death. Crap, why did I pick a Co game to go over? Alright, yeah, I can't let that happen otherwise. That's huge. But that means there's like infinite co-threats here, right? Infinite co-threats. Uh, you for co-threats. Of course, you can pause the video and look for co-threats. You're more than welcome to do so. I, in fact, advising you to do it if you actually are studying the game. Wow. I'm getting hungry, so I'm actually speeding up. This is bad. I think I did that in the right order. Unfortunately, not playing this in KGS, so if I did something illegal, I don't know. I think that's right. I think that's right. So we connect there. Retake. That connects, that would suck. And white does this instead, okay. He smells something afoot. That's not to say that Li Cheng Ho probably, you know, just sat back and put his feet in his opponent's face, so that would be kind of funny. Drop down, no kill, no connect. And goes back. That can't live locally, so why would we keep playing here? He's just creating threats. Actually, he's making the co really, really huge, because if we play something else and we ignore it, and we win this co and this has liberties, and this dies, and that's really cool. White Atari. <coughs> I 
goes through. And judging from my frantic scrolling, White uh, resigns here. Understandable. Because we can't really get into a capture race here, right? Because we can see immediately that this is never going to work, right? Everyone can see that? There's simply too many. Done. Yeah, a lot of ways to handle the situation, isn't there? Alright. Um, so that's that. Kind of went over this a little bit fast. Uh, if there was anything in this game, though, that you that confused you on your first go-through that you realized later on in the game, like, uh, we had, uh, what was it, this stone? That also turned out to be a ladder breaker for over here. Definitely go over the game again and make sure you fill in those blanks and if anything is still confusing to you then that's okay because as you go over the game maybe not you know back to back over and over and over again but you know as you gradually go over it over the however long you study games you can keep coming back to it and if you keep asking yourself little questions like you know where are the weak groups here where are the large points uh, just like taking time out whenever you have sente and really examining the board like I kind of did once in a while um, then those questions will gradually get answered because a lot of the answers are staring right in front of you as you go through the game um, a lot of you who do study the game uh, though on a board like this you might find yourself even though you're not on an actual uh, not playing on the computer you might find yourself going over it a little bit quickly like I did, and that's completely okay. Uh, you might miss a few things, and that's completely okay as well. Because if you go over it again, then you're probably not going to miss them the second time, or the third time, etc, etc, etc. But yeah, this was a nice, easy game, I thought. Well, had a little co in it, I guess. But overall, pretty easy game to go over. Uh, nice introduction to what will probably be my How to Study Professional Game series. <laughs> if I decide to do a series about this. Uh, if you guys actually like this and want to see more games as to, you know, how do you study them, uh, then by all means, make sure to like the video, leave a comment, that kind of thing. Uh, only way I know to continue doing this or not is by your input. So, if you liked it, you didn't like it, do make your voice known and let me know. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you liked it. I enjoyed going over the game. This is definitely one that I would have gone over just myself, just to get a little bit better understanding of uh, the game. So yeah, hope you did too. So until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful Go playing experience, and I will see you guys later.